Your Apple TV has a lot of amazing features and cool abilities. In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything you need to know. So if you're a new time owner or you're a veteran, I'm certain you're gonna learn something new in today's video, especially with the latest release of tvOS. And of course, timestamps to everything we'll be talking about will also be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's start off with the remote. Because I don't know if you ever notice, but whenever you like use one of the app icons by using the trackpad, some of these icons actually feature a unique animation. As you see right here, the joystick actually moves side to side if you move slow enough. And then as an added bonus, if you have one of these aluminum body Apple TV remotes, by using the control center remote app on your iPhone and you tap out right above here, you can select the Apple TV, but there's a fine icon right here which will basically allow you to locate your remote faster in case you misplace it. Very similar to like your AirTag. But the remote itself has some amazing shortcuts. You see, if you double tap the TV icon, this will activate your app switcher, which allows you to basically force close apps by swiping up. And next time when you boot that app, it will start fresh, freeing it from any bugs you may be experiencing. And then whenever you find yourself deep into an app and you don't feel like back tapping, back tapping just to go to the home page, just long hold the back arrow and it'll take you straight to the home page of your Apple TV. But by simply double tapping the back arrow quickly, it'll take you to your screensaver. So you don't have to wait for the timer to automatically start your screensaver. And new this time is a swipe up from here allows you to quickly select between the different screensaver options you have. So you can select the new portraits, your memory sideshow with your iCloud or the classic aerials. And with the aerials, you can also use the touchpad to switch between the different screensavers that it has. And we'll also show you additional information on the bottom left you see right there. But for your portrait shots, by going into settings and going to screensaver, this is not only where you can change the timer, but if we go into portraits, you can select either all, pets, nature, or cities. So you could do something like hide people but show nature and cities only. So if you wish to customize some of these, you can. Now when watching your favorite shows, if your partner or yourself like to watch two things at once, sharing an Apple TV, it's super easy to do so. So right now I'm playing Smiling Friends using HBO, and on my iPhone, I am playing a totally different video. Hitting the cast icon on the top, this new option will pop up, select AirPlay, and then just make sure you select your Apple TV, Tap replace, and back on our Apple TV, it's already casting what we were watching, right? But by taking, picking up the remote and selecting the picture and picture icon, now you have picture and picture functionality. And by simply tapping on the TV icon on your remote, you can switch between the two different things. So right now we have selected the picture and picture and we can move it any corner that we like, or we close it all in general. By tapping back and hitting play, now we have two things playing at once using third parties because this is on HBO Max, not the Apple TV app. But now let's go ahead and close this. Select the TV icon. So that's one great walk around in case you're using like a streaming platform like in our case that does not support picture in picture. You could cast it from your phone to the Apple TV and have it be enabled for picture in picture. Because right now I'm gonna switch to Apple TV and we're gonna select something that's on the Apple TV. And see, now we have the option to do picture in picture. So some apps allow you to do this so you don't have to do the AirPlay method where you can still navigate your Apple TV and play like a different streaming platform at the same time. Of course, this is more ideal for like sports when you go watch a sport game in the background while still watching like a movie. Now, new this time for Apple TV is automatic subtitles. Whenever you mute your device as an example, automatic subtitles should automatically pop up. And if it doesn't work for you, you may need to go to the settings to manually enable this. So simply go into your Apple TV settings, tap on video and audio, and go down where you see the automatic subtitle section. This is where you go ahead and enable it so it automatically plays while mute, as well as skip back to play for a few seconds, 30 seconds it says right there. And it can also do subtitle translation as well and select auto. But keep in mind, these features only will work on the Apple TV app. However, there is a clever walk around. You see if we launch something like Netflix and now we're playing Lucifer, if you use the Siri remote and actually ask Siri, what did they say? Siri will take us back and you'll see subtitles, captions are enabled for 30 seconds and they will automatically fade away. 
But a feature that was exclusive to the Apple TV is now found on other third party, and that is enhanced dialogue. This little icon on the very right with the little circle with audio waves in the middle. By selecting here, you could actually enhance the vocals or reduce background sounds. So by selecting here, you can enhance the dialogue so you can hear people whispering clearer, as well as you can enable reduce background sounds. So you can actually hear and understand the conversation a lot better. Ideal to use if you're falling asleep and you don't wanna be roughly awakened by a loud boom. And now speaking about the bed, if your partner is in bed, and you like to dim down the screen on your Apple TV, you can set a cool little shortcut where, where a triple tap on the back key will dim down your screen so your display is not too bright. And you can make it even dimmer if you enable it on your TV that you're watching it from. If you like to enable this triple tap feature to dim down your screen, it's super easy to do so. Simply go into your Apple TV settings and go navigate down to accessibility and go into the display section and look for light sensitivity. Right here, turn this on and select the sensitivity level you like to adjust it to. The lowest is 25%. Now after adjusting that sensitivity, go back, go back even more until you're back in the accessibility tab. From here, go down to, all the way to the very bottom in the general section where it says accessibility shortcut, click on it and here just select light sensitivity and you can add other shortcuts too like to quickly enable closed captions by doing this this allows you to triple tap the back arrow to turn it on and off by demand you can also do a similar thing on your profile on top you can either tap on your profile on top or long hold the tv icon this will bring down your apple tv control center and go into the accessibility icon and here's where you can manually enable it or disable it or go into settings to decide on adding more now, if you've been enjoying these tips and tricks so far, be sure to leave this video a like because I like to keep my videos driven by you guys, not from brands. So by hitting that like button, that lets me know you guys enjoy these sponsor-free ad videos from like external brands like VPNs and stuff like that. But it primarily helps out the channel and allows others to locate this video so they can also find these useful tips and tricks. So thank you to those that hit that like button. Now, if you haven't noticed yet on your profile on top, one more if we bring it up right here, Create profiles. If you have a household that shares Apple TVs across like your living rooms, their bedrooms and stuff like that, creating separate profiles allows everything to be organized and categorized. So this way everybody has their content organized to their personal preference. So really make sure you utilize the profiles ability. And of course, to add, you can just tap the plus icon right here. And then so long as you're signed into the correct profile, if you ever misplaced your phone, your wallet or an AirTag, Literally anything you could do on your Find My account, the Siri remote is also able to help locate stuff for you without you having to sign in or look for another phone or call yourself. So just ask Siri where's my iPhone and Siri will actually help you on the Apple TV as well. Now, if you like to unlock the ability to adjust the volume with your Apple TV remote to your TV that's paired, or you wish to grant your iPhone a volume control action because you can actually adjust the audio of your Apple TV by using the volume rockers on your iPhone as well as so long as you're using the app. You could either do it with HDMI ARC or an IR blaster. And if it's not working for you, you need to manually go into your Apple TV settings and just scroll down to remote and devices. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see home theater control. But on bottom here where it says volume control, go in here and check mark auto this way you utilize both HDMI or IR, and this is how you could adjust it so your Apple TV can actually control the volume of your TV without using two different remotes or more. And yes, you can also enable it so your home theater can also be controlled this way as well. But if whatever some reason your Apple TV remote was working, but now the volume isn't responding, by long holding the TV icon and the volume down for five seconds, this will quickly reset your remote. Not factory reset, it'll just reset it. So any bugs you may encounter, will be eliminated once the remote is reset. So VPNs have been available on Apple TV ever since the release of Apple TV OS 17. And now if you go on to the Apple App Store, you'll be able to find a lot of your favorite VPN providers like Surfshark as well as NordVPN. So if you are an existing subscriber to one of these providers, 
You can now easily log in and you can change your Apple TV region to other places around the world. And the benefit to this is if you're using popular streaming services like Netflix, I find that some of the shows are not available here in the States or even movies. But in South Korea, I had good luck on finding like John Wick, the complete series. Where over here, I would just had to rent. But since I'm already a subscriber and I have a VPN access, I was able to spoof my location and watch John Wick without having to rent any of the films since over there it's already available on streaming platforms like netflix so definitely do utilize vpns if you can so if you have little ones in your household and you're not taking advantage of apple's parental control you definitely need to because there's some amazing settings right here if you don't know by going into your apple tv settings right here and you go into general and then you scroll into restrictions here's where you can go ahead and turn it on it is going to request for you to create a generic password well don't make it generic i'm making it generic for the purpose of this video it even tells me how easy it is to someone to guess this but if you have multiple profiles on your apple tv you'll find them right here and you can enable the ones you want to have full access to or block entirely so since i only have myself on this apple tv my household decided just to rely on my account which i'm okay with but by hitting allowed this will allow me the person signed into this Apple TV to also use Face ID or Touch ID to bypass the PIN code access. So by going down, if you notice rental purchases, you could restrict or you could block in-app purchases as well. And then in terms of rating for music, TV shows, or apps even, you could add restrictions right here. So movies, you got your PG-13 rating, or you could just not allow movies in general. So by going back and after you edit all those, and we go back to some of these apps that I know I blocked, like YouTube. I could use a little pop-up window will pop up on my iPhone right here, allowing me to use Face ID to unlock it and approve. Again, this is all due to the fact that we actually allowed it on the general setting. So if you like to have full lockability restriction orders on your Apple TV, that's what you need to do. But I also highly recommend just perusing around here in this setting. It's really straightforward and easy to use. So FaceTime continuity is where you are now able to FaceTime from your Apple TV. And the beauty about this, wirelessly you can connect either your own devices, if you select your own profile, a little window will pop up on your devices, letting you know if you like to use this device as your camera. But if you have somebody else in your household with you, they can always just scan this QR code. So long as it's an Apple product, they'll be able to connect to your Apple TV and be used for a FaceTime calling as well. But once you select your camera of choice, there's a few unique gesture controls you definitely need to know to really spice things up whenever you're FaceTiming somebody using your Apple TV. As an example, creating a heart sign with your hand will create these cool heart animations. A thumbs up, we'll do a thumbs up emoji. Two thumbs up, we'll do this. A single thumbs up, we'll do this thumbs down emoji. And then two thumbs down, we'll do a uh, basically boohoo, sad cloud, rainy day type of thing. A peace sign or victory, we'll do balloons. And then two peace signs slash victory, we'll do this, confetti. And then if you do a heavy metal rock on to the front facing camera, you'll get an epic laser show. So those are some cool fun ones you could do to spice up the conversation with families and friends. Now for iOS 18, we now finally have the ability to use music sharing. So by simply launching your Apple Music account and we play like a random song, if we go all the way to the very bottom right here with this icon person, on the very bottom, you can select here and you can have anybody in your household to scan that QR code and they can add songs to the next track. This way, everybody can become a DJ in case you have like a house party. And no, they do not need to be required to have Apple Music themselves. It's only the host that needs an Apple Music subscription. And once the party is done, you can just tap in. But the cool thing is about this, you also have lyrics that could pop up and you do have karaoke mode where you could do it with just a microphone from the remote or you could do a microphone and a camera and you got like crazy effects. So karaoke mode is one of the cool things that the Apple TV does have. Now, thanks to Apple TV OS 18, if you go into settings, if you're using this for a projector and you go into video and audio aspect ratio, you now 
you can see now that we have 21 by 9 which is the ideal recommended aspect ratio when viewing your movies and stuff on a projector using the apple tv and now if you have a smart home camera so in your household smart doorbells so long as it's compatible with apple home kit you can set it so it pops up automatically on your screen whenever motion is detected on those motion cameras if it doesn't pop up automatically for you, you are required to go into your Apple TV settings and go down to AirPlay and HomeKit. And from here, go into the camera and doorbell setting. And then your camera is going to be named differently. Mine just has random numbers on top, as you see right there. But where it says show on this Apple TV, turn it on. And this way, whenever a live feed is coming up while you're viewing your video, you can see what's going on around your household. Or you could turn that on and just allow notification activity instead of a live feed. Personal preference right here. Now the Apple TV homepage is pretty customizable. You could create folders and stuff if you like to, just like your iPhone. Just simply long hold and go tap edit home. You could rearrange your icons, so your most used, and you could put the ones that you use on a daily basis on top and everything else on the very bottom. And now we have a six row for the Apple TV as you see right here. But if you have a lot of Apple TVs around your household and you like to synchronize it all together, there's a setting that does allow you to do this. Go into your Apple TV and go into the user and accounts, select the account and go down to you see the one home page and go ahead and look for one home screen and just turn this on and this way they're all synchronized under your iCloud account. So all these apps you have here are all synchronized and the ones you decide on deleting later they'll all be deleted across all your other Apple TVs. As you see, I just did that. So again, just long hold. And if you like to stack these up again, it's kind of hard, but you could hover over the app and it'll create like a custom folder. And then you could also rename it as well. And this would be when the uh, keyboard notification will pop up. So you get actually use your phone keyboard instead of the actual Apple TV and make your life easier. Or you could use Siri to dictate what you like to type in. And just like that, now you are a pro when it comes to using your Apple TV to its full potential. If I missed some that you'd like to share with everybody else, feel free to also comment down below because I'm pretty sure I just barely scratched the surface. There's a lot of amazing things you can do with the Apple TV, but these are the commonly less known ones. Now, if you'd like to see what's new and what you could do on the latest version of CarPlay OS, including the ability to pause your music as you get in your car, I cover all that in great detail in this video over there where I go through a handful of hidden features on iOS 18 for Apple CarPlay. Thank you so much for watching.